welcome back to Hardware Unavailable. Today we're checking out the Sapphire RX 6900 XT Toxic. Yep, they've brought the Toxic branding back. And this is an extreme high-end AIO liquid-cooled graphics card. So as you can see here, big old 360 millimeter radiator. But anyway, you're probably wondering, that's all good and well, but what is the price? Unfortunately, I don't know what the price is, but let's be honest, it's not that unfortunate because whatever Sapphire told me the price was going to be, it wouldn't be that. And it also probably won't be available. So this is kind of a preview, a graphics card preview, let's say. Of course, the AMD MSRP is meant to be $1,000 US. Even if MSRPs were being met, this obviously wouldn't be a $1,000 base model. It'd fetch probably two, $300. Uh, over the MSRP, but again today, who knows what that's going to translate into. Anyway, as I said, at the time of making this video, Sapphire hadn't yet informed me as to what the suggested retail price is going to be, but yeah, it's no doubt going to be uh, very, very expensive and also out of stock. So please consider this comprehensive review as a preview of what you can expect once it's finally available. So let's start as we often do with these AIB reviews by taking a look around the card. And then of course we will tear it down for a closer look at the PCB beneath and of course the cooler itself. Now, as you've probably guessed, this is a hybrid cooled graphics card. So it includes both air and liquid cooling. And because of that, it is very different to, well, all the other 6900 XTs that we've looked at so far, which pretty much just includes the AMD reference model. So it can be very interesting to see how this compares to that reference card. Quite interestingly, despite including such a large radiator, Sapphire isn't cooling any additional components with the water block. Instead, the design is very similar to CPU AIOs, the ones that you'll be very familiar with. So this is very different to what we saw with the ASUS RTX 6800 XT Strix OC LC that I looked at recently, as that model featured a custom copper cold plate covering not just the GPU, but also the GDDR6 memory. Sapphire, on the other hand, has included a traditional air-cooled heatsink, which removes heat from the memory and VARM components. So an interesting choice there, and it will be interesting to see how well it performs. Now, because much of the cooling element is external from the card, the toxic measures just 268 millimeters long, which is quite a bit shorter than most high-end graphics cards, which typically span about 320 millimeters. Unfortunately though, Sapphire hasn't been able to fit everything into a dual slot package. Instead, the card measures 44 millimeters wide, which is just four millimeters too wide in order to take up just two slots. So technically this is a triple slot graphics card, Though this really shouldn't be an issue as you won't be installing it in too many compact PC cases given that it includes a 360mm radiator. It's also worth noting that the card does stand 131mm tall and then of course you do have the two tubes to deal with so realistically you'll need about 180mm of headroom in your case. So that's going to be another issue for small form factor builders. As for the weight, the card tips the scales at 1,097 grams, but with the radiator included, you're looking at a total of 2,107 grams. Design-wise, I really do like the look of the Toxic, especially when it's all powered up. The card lights up quite nicely. The RGB effects are very clean on this one. On the front of the card, there's a mirror panel that displays the Sapphire Toxic branding, along with a translucent 100 millimeter fan. This fan's behind a grill, which is pretty neat. And because Sapphire only needs to use a single fan, they've configured the card to vent some of the air externally through the rear IO bracket, much like what you'd see with a traditional blower style card, for example. For those of you into your RGB lighting, you'll be pleased to find there's also Sapphire backlit branding on the outer facing edge of the card, as well as the backplate. So there's plenty of lit zones for you to enjoy. In typical Sapphire fashion, the backplate is very aggressive looking, featuring a number of cutouts and printed on lines and stuff. It's, uh, it's very busy, but I think it works. Then around at the IO panel, we get a basic configuration, which includes a single HDMI 2.1 port, three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs, and that means the USB Type-C port from the AMD reference model is missing here. Okay, so that's our look around the Sapphire RX 6900 XT Toxic graphics card. It is now time to pull this thing apart. With the cooler completely removed and disassembled, we have three main components, the plastic shroud, the air cooler, which is fairly basic heatsink, and then we have the copper water block with pump housing. 
The water block looks very much like something you'd expect to mount on your CPU, and even the mounting hardware looks very similar to that of many of the AIOs that we're familiar with. Quite interestingly, the pump housing does feature some neat toxic branding, but you'll never see that unless you take the shroud off like we have, but still it is there, so kind of cool, I guess. Then we have the heat spreader slash heat sink, which is used to cool the GDDR6 memory and VRM components. The black aluminum heat spreader is used to make contact with all the components, the memory, the power stages, and the inductors. Then Sapphire has strategically placed three nickel plated copper heat pipes to move heat away from the hotspots, dispersing it through a series of aluminum fins located directly beneath the 100 millimeter fan. Now jumping over to the 260mm long PCB, we find 18 power stages along with a pair of 8-pin PCIe power connectors in addition to a single 6-pin PCIe power connector. Now for the power stages, Sapphire is using Infineon's two 1490 Optimos power stages which are rated for a massive 90 amp capacity. 14 have been used to deliver power to the GPU, then in addition to that there's a single phase for GPU power. VDDCI, and then two phases for the GDDR6 memory. Finally, on the PCB, you'll also find a dual BIOS switch, as well as an ARGB bypass connector. Now, for the dual BIOS function, the primary BIOS clocks the card at up to 2365 MHz, and allows for a total graphics power rating of 289 watts. The secondary BIOS clocks slightly lower at 2340 MHz, with a TGP of 281 watts. And there's also the one-click toxic boost option available via the Trick software that automatically maxes the hand-picked silicon out, pushing up to 2,660 megahertz, and quite interestingly also overclocks the memory to 16.8 gigabits per second. Now, playing shot of the Tomb Raider for 30 minutes saw the toxic peak at just 68 degrees for the hotspot, and this was in a 21 degree room installed inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, fully populated with fans. That's almost 30 degrees cooler than the AMD reference model. In order to maintain that impressive temperature, the fans spun at just 1000 RPM, which I'm sure I don't need to tell you is an incredibly low fan speed. And the typical core clock speed seen during our testing was 2,470 megahertz, and that saw the power consumption for just the graphics card hit 349 watts. So that's an almost 20% increase over the AMD reference model. Now, using the toxic boost option in the Trick software, the average core clock frequency was boosted to 2,615 megahertz, and that's a further 6% overclock. So not bad for the click of a button. It's also an impressive 16% frequency jump up from the AMD reference model. So this is a really nice feature that'll help Toxic users get a lot more out of the product. And as we're about to see, the Toxic Boost option does come very close to maxing out what the silicon is capable of. When manually overclocked, the card reached an incredible 2.7 GHz on average, and the memory also hit 17.1 gigabits per second, which is the current limit enforced by AMD. The peak hotspot temperature maxed out at just 70 degrees, and this time the fans spun ever so slightly faster at 1050 RPM. But of course here they were very quiet and couldn't be heard over the case fans. Finally, when overclocked, the card sucked down 367 watts, so that's just a 5% increase from the stock factory OC configuration. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we're testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and for this one we have just a few select games to look at. So here's a quick look at FPS performance in Shove the Tomb Raider at 1440p. Out of the box, the Toxic was just 3% faster than the reference model, and just a percent slower than the Founders Edition 3090, which is a stock graphics card, so this isn't a 6900 XT versus RTX 3090 comparison. Now, my manual overclock boosted performance by a further 5%, hitting an impressive 177 FPS, though it is worth noting that that's only a 4% increase over the air-cooled AMD reference model, but the Toxic was much cooler and quieter when overclocked. We're looking at very similar margins at 4K, though this time the max overclock for the Toxic was enough to match the stock RTX 3090. Again, not a 6900 XT versus RTX 3090 comparison. As I noted, that is just a found edition RTX 3090. It's just there for reference. And of course, these results only apply to this one title. So I guess the focus really is on comparing the Toxic to the 6900 XT reference model.
Now, as for power consumption, the Toxic does like to suck down a lot of power. Out of the box, it consumed 349 watts, which is a 3% increase over the manually overclocked AMD reference 6900XT, and almost 20% more than the stock reference model. And the manual overclock increased power usage by a further 5%. As you might expect from a graphics card with a 360mm radiator attached to it, the Toxic was one cool customer. We're looking at a peak edge temperature of just 53 degrees, which is just 3 degrees hotter than the 6800XT Strix OC-LC, but 25 degrees cooler than the AMD reference model. The GPU hotspot temperature was also extremely impressive as the Toxic never went above 68 degrees in its out of the box configuration, and that's a massive 26 degree reduction when compared to the AMD reference model, which peaked at a rather toasty 94 degrees. The peak VRM temperature is also very low despite the fact that it's not liquid cooled, and this low temperature has been achieved due to the fact that the GPU isn't dumping loads of heat directly into the PCB, heating up all the surrounding components, and the fact that Sapphire has used very high quality 70 amp power stages. Even the GDDR6 memory ran very cool, peaking at just 51 degrees, which is actually a few degrees cooler than the memory on the 6800 XT Strix OC-LC, which is interesting because the GPU and memory on that particular model share the same water block, so perhaps that's not the most optimal solution there, at least for the memory. And the 51 degree temperature was also a massive 16 degree reduction when compared to the AMD reference model, so there's absolutely no chance you're going to cook the memory on the Toxic. Okay, with all the graphics cards now noise normalized, the Toxic ran 22 degrees cooler than the AMD 6900 XT reference card, and much cooler than the best air-cooled 6800 XTs that we've tested so far. It was also 5 degrees hotter than the ASUS Strix OC-LC, but that is of course a 6800 XT, so not exactly a fair comparison. We're also looking at a 23 degree reduction in peak hotspot temperature for the Toxic when compared to AMD 6900 XT reference model. And really, 65 degrees as the peak hotspot temperature on a 6900 XT with a noise cap of just 40 decibels is extremely impressive. Given the VRM ran very cool out of the box, it will come as no surprise to find sub 50 degree temperatures here. A peak of 48 degrees is unnecessarily low, but I'm not complaining. Like the VRM, the memory is also running cool as a cucumber. Well, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, a 47 degree cucumber would be quite interesting, but the point is, very cool for GDDR6 memory at full load. Well there you have it, the Sapphire RX 6900XT Toxic. It's pretty amazing, in fact it's very amazing, and I bet that's just what you want to hear, given there's almost no chance you're about to buy it anytime soon. And of course, availability is likely going to be just part of the issue, albeit a rather big part, but I suspect price is going to be a bit of a doozy as well. Honestly, no idea what this thing is going to cost, and really, it doesn't matter as you should hold off until availability improves, at which point pricing should come back down to earth. When that happens, the Toxic is absolutely a graphics card that you should be on the lookout for, assuming you're in the market for an extreme high-end graphics card. That said, if Sapphire does release a 6800 XT version of the Toxic, then obviously get that, as paying a premium for the 6900 XT makes no sense. At least that would be the case during more normal times. The 6900 XT isn't really a GPU we care for, given that it costs over 50% more than the 6800 XT, at least based on the MSRP, and it's at best around 10% faster. So in our opinion, if you want an extreme GPU for the, I guess, bragging rights or whatever, we feel the RTX 3090 and its big old VRAM buffer makes more sense. Anyway, I won't get too much into that. If you've landed on an extreme Radeon RX 6900XT as your next upgrade, then I certainly suggest checking out the Sapphire Toxic version. And that is going to do it for this video. If you liked the video, well, there's a thing for that. You can also subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to join the Harbour Unbox community, then you can do so either at Floatplane or Patreon. The links for both of those are in the video description. It will get you access to our monthly live stream to myself get together and do that. We also have some Q&As. We have an exclusive Discord server for Harbour Unbox members, so very cool community there. Uh, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff. If you're interested, check it out. Links are in the video description, as I said. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.